Okay, so we're going to uh, touch on the daunting, wicked problems that society is facing, uh, and we're also going to show you some of the, the process that we embarked on as a team at the IWB to sort of solve some of these wicked problems and then talk you kind of through how we approached um, our understanding of sustainability and ultimately that shift in discourse to resiliency. So we're facing this rapid urbanization, and what does that mean? Um, we're seeing lack of economic opportunity, environmental stress, uh, and a growing inequality amongst uh, demographics around the world or, or even post-industrial uh, cities with people migrating out. So we want to say, are the tools we're using to address these city systems um, applicable in its current state? Uh, and when those conditions uh, persist, we see outcry, protest, um, revolution, and sometimes war. So then we also have to look at... Um, do the people uh, around the world have the, um, have the platforms to have their voice heard? And then what all this culminates to is when you have these systems under uh, a great deal of stress already, um, mainly due to human condition, what happens when nature has its say? And so this is um, Chile in uh, February of 2010, and that starts uh, our case study, which Pyam will continue with. Yeah, I don't think I can be seen here in the dark, but I make sure um, my voice is heard. Um, at the IWB, we actually had the, um, the, the opportunity. We were lucky enough to work with uh, an amazing team, uh, team with uh, different partners and, and collaborators um, uh, globally in different countries. Um, I don't, for those of you who don't know IWB, IWB is a, is a think tank studio here in Toronto. And um, we looked at LOTA. This is a picture from LOTA. We looked at the uh, problems, the social challenges, and environmental challenges that the city was facing, such as um, uh, youth migration, um, economical collapse, um, unemployment, high unemployment rate, and, and uh, natural disasters such as earthquake. Uh, we embarked on a lot of uh, different kinds of tools and processes. We um, focused and emphasized on, on collaboration and, and working with different people from different disciplines and different backgrounds. That's something that really uh, truly helped us break uh, uh, our biases, break out of the bubble, and be able to um, uh, really uh, innovate when we are looking at something like uh, such as wicked problems. We looked at design as as a research tool uh, that and that helped us uh, add a, a, an analytical analytical uh, layer to the, uh, to the to our research and be able to synthesize and truly understand the problems that a city such as Lota uh, was facing. Uh, we tried not to look at components of systems in isolation, but actually look at the systems as a whole and then try to understand how these systems that Jamie was talking about in, in the urban environment uh, work. And this is a tool that we developed actually that to, to check uh, some of our, our, our ideas against. And at the end, uh, I know empathy um, is, is always emphasized on in the design process. And uh, that, that's something that we tried to practice as well in, in, the, in this project. And and, and, and to to basically believe in the fact that um, the design the answers are not really in the studio you 've got to get out there and engage with the stakeholders and at the end of the day, know that it 's the people of the community that will uh, make sure that um, your designs will be implemented. It is um, invest, investing in the um, in the in an infrastructure that that would leverage the uh, the social capital and the human resources and then uh, the biggest assets of a city like Lota that are the people. And so, uh, when the research phase uh, culminated, we knew as a team that it wasn't going to be about um, design imperialism or infer in interventionist architecture, and that everything that we did, everything we proposed or planned, uh, needed to start with a community ownership, community foundation, and ultimately, uh, as Payam alluded to, some of the, the platforms and the mechanisms um, that uh, allow engagement to take place. So, uh, our revitalization plan culminated in six strategic objectives, uh, going back to the system. Um, they, they're all intertwined, but the, the most important fact is that uh, they're all rooted uh, in community stakeholders. Uh, they set the groundwork and they uh, take the projects where they envision them to go. 
Um, these are some of the uh, examples of, of these projects. We were looking at housing, for example, and looking at the issues that um, people were facing, uh, lack of uh, problems with zoning, uh, with infrastructure, um, problems with sewage, uh, water, uh, ex ex having access to water, and, um, and road systems, and, and things like that. And our projects were actually looking at solutions not only that uh, not solutions not that were not only dealing with uh, architecture and design of the house but also we're uh, dealing with programming and um, creating policies around the housing and uh, how do you actually create uh, a program that deals with funding uh, that uh, and engaging the people of the community so they can they can actually um, get the project implemented and continuing on that philosophy uh, across all the different um, strategic objectives, uh, we have here the a former uh, miners' union building, uh, never realized and abandoned after its, the Lota's economic collapse. So we had this space. It was iconic. Um, the, the public space around it was considered negative or dead space. Uh, and what we wanted to do was to um, plan a physical space in which a community could, uh, could realize the future opportunities. So this was a, a center for social innovation. Uh, that was a, an infill development that uh, leveraged the sort of the, the existing street mural art uh, pertinent to the culture in Lota. Um, and with all of this uh, in, the, in this, the theme of the spirit of the night in terms of um, global cities, local connection, we wanted to take a quick scan around Toronto and see some of the things that we were excited by. The, the high-rise project, Millionth Tower at the National Film Bureau, um, really exciting way of, of gathering stories um, but also communicating it uh, digitally and um, Graphically, And then also uh, um, a project our studio worked on last summer, um, the Bureau of uh, Doing Something About It. And this was a project that um, was spurred from uh, a complaint choir with a thousand complaints about uh, sort of the urban condition in Toronto. Uh, and this was an opportunity for the public to interact, interface, engage um, with uh, the design industry um, and really focus on uh, providing sort of insight and tools um, to really take back to their own day-to-day -day life. And uh, as Jamie was saying, to, to, to wrap up here, basically in the, in the theme of celebrating our cities, we would like to call upon a conversa conversation that focuses on co-creative, co analytical, inclusive, and empathic tools and platforms that will help our city move forward.